Hey everyone, Chen Chen here bringing you guys another video. Today we got a very, very special video. A video that I haven't actually done before, but it is going to be a guide of auction, which I have done, but based on an itemization build that I feel as if I haven't really done um, in my channel. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. The reason why I'm actually doing this is because this build is something I created personally. The, um, the tech that I put is mine and then also back in the old days storm razor rfc combo is something i originally created and uh, messed around with and with that being said this video is going to hopefully showcase to you guys the strength of this build how insane this build is and just you know the little to no counterplay you have once you actually reach this build so without further ado if you enjoyed this video make sure to smash the like button it really helps me know that you guys actually enjoy the sort of content and let's get right into it all right so, as you guys can see, I did make a Twitter post about it. If you haven't followed me on Twitter, please follow. Um, titled, Essence Reaver Tech is actually nuts. So much CDR, so much poke, so much burst. This build is the future for Auction. Get ready. So, as you can see right here, this is the build, all right? You go Storm Razor. You go IE. You go RFC. Then you go Situational Items. Generally speaking, you either go BT slash LDR, depending on if they have tanks or not. If they don't, then you can go BT. And then as your sixth item, you slot in the Essence Reaver. So kind of the whole premise behind this build is poke. This is a poke build. I mentioned it in previous itemization uh, guides that I made for Auction. This is a strictly poke build, but I'm going to go into a gameplay and showcase exactly how it works, how it functions, how you want to play with this build. And overall, that is the guide. And hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will be able to also pilot this build. Because it is a very, very hard, very, very different playstyle that 99% of auction mains aren't used to. And it's going to take a while to get used to. But in my opinion, once you actually do get familiar with this build, it is just the best way to play auction currently. Alrighty, we have landed into the practice tool. I want to go over a couple things in the practice tool before we actually dive into gameplay. Um, so first and foremost, I want to mention the power spikes of this build because it is a very different power spike compared to original um, auction builds, right? Think about Kraken Slayer first item. Think about Bork first item. You are slotting into Storm Razor first item. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is because Storm Razor actually doesn't do significantly less damage than its counterparts if you use it correctly. When you build Storm Razor, you want to pay attention to your energized bar. Even if you have, even if you don't have Fleet and you go PTA, this still works. You want to pay attention to your energized because as you can see, you are doing a really, really good amount of damage just initially, right? And furthermore, when you have a first time Storm Razor, it actually gives you the movement speed, which you can play around with. So for example, a basic trading pattern you can look into is something like auto, auto, Q, and then run out, something like that, right? And if you do this on multiple occasions, while laning and let's say the mid lane because generally speaking i do want to preface this build probably isn't good for top lane because it is a roam slash poke build and top lane you kind of need to play to kill your laner this isn't going to be the best but what i'm trying to get at is you're actually your poke is actually starting at your first item right you will be able to out damage kraken in multiple instances as opposed to one instance as a whole if that makes sense so in laning phase, generally speaking, you're going to see throughout this video what I actually do when I have Storm Razor. I go camo in mid lane, for example, and then I try to sneak up, right? And auto, auto, and Q, and stuff like that. And if, uh, if I want to keep going, I can EN, stuff like that. And the poke and burst is actually there, but it's just shorter burst compared to, so let's say, Kraken, let's say, Borg, where you're actually trying to all in, right? So your first power spike is actually Storm Razor, right? And then your second power spike is IE, right? And then your third power spike is RFC. Why is this build so good? You're spiking every single item. That's why this build is good. Storm Razor, you're going to feel a spike, right? IE, you're definitely going to feel a spike. And then RFC is when this build comes online. Why? Well, if you guys don't know this interaction, it is the basically what makes Auction have very little counterplay interaction. Where you go in camo, right? You can see that this is my camo range, this outer one. And this is my RFC range. So basically what happens is when you have three items, you sit in camo, you wait for the enemy to walk into you, and you just auto-auto. Boom. Right? Super simple. It procs your energized damage, 
which is 150 currently. G granted, this is, um, you know, artificial in practice tool. And then also it procs 60 extra damage. Now I do want to preface, RFC is a terrible item. Yes, because it deals 60, it used to actually do more and it used to cost less, but unfortunately we still have to go with this. It still makes Auction what he is to this day, allowing him to do this insanely broken technique, right? Once again, let me show you, boom, boom. And you literally just run. You don't have to commit, you're safe, you're playing from fog, you're playing from out of vision basically, and you're doing damage. That is the key thing that Auction's missing in his kit, right? For example, if you're playing regular Auction, you can't do that. If you're having a regular fight, you have to walk into your 500 range or you have to use your E. What happens when you use your E and you don't kill anyone? You're dead, right? This build actually allows you to play from far, which is hence why it's called the poke build. And yeah. So now, once again, I do want to talk about power spikes. Like I said at the beginning, every single item will spike this build even harder. Bloodthirster. Why do you go Bloodthirster? You're not necessarily going in for the lifesteal. It's actually for the Engorge. While above 70% HP, you gain additional attack damage. That is a no-brainer. It spikes your Storm Razor damage, and it's just a lot of damage in general. So, as you're leaving, you know, as you're leaving and poking, you're doing a lot more damage with Bloodthirster, right? And here is the thing that I created, I pioneered. It's the Essence Reaver tech. Why is it actually good well let me go over so obviously you're gonna have your boots and essence reaver is gonna be your last item so when i was thinking of this build and how to curve out this build i was like i want a perfect item that synergizes with the whole premise of poke and i was like wait essence reaver after using an ability your next attack deals additional damage based on bonus um ad and it restores mana and it has ability haste and it has crits there's a lot of things that go into this, right? First and foremost, notice how I have 80% crit. I was like, okay, the last item has to have crit. It has to. Otherwise, not having 100% crit and guaranteeing crit every single time is terrible, right? So I was like, okay, it has crit. Okay, it has a good amount of AD, right? 55, pretty good. Okay, it also has ability haze, which doesn't really matter when you're level 18, but it's pretty niche. It's pretty cool. And then obviously the spell blade. So... Why do you round out the build with Essence Reaver? Well, when you press W and you have Essence Reaver, once again, it is insane amount of burst that you are actually going to be doing. Now, this build scales, right? Why does it scale? Well, when you're level 18, right, your W is a zero mana with Essence Reaver 1.67 cooldown. Are you guys understanding this? Every 1.5 second, you can weave in and out. Look, boom. You weave in and out. Now, bear in mind, your Energize isn't actually going to come back in that time, but how, how do they interact? Look, boom, boom, I'm camming, right? And then I can keep doing this. Like, this build is absolutely bonkers for this reason. That is the whole essence of poke build. Let me go into a video and actually showcase how, how to play this build properly. And yeah, let's get right into it. Alrighty, we've loaded it into the game, and now keep in mind this is a Syndra matchup, which is technically one of Akshan's hardest matchups if the Syndra is good, right? So this video, uh, this video example is hopefully going to demonstrate how strong this build is. Now I'm not going to go over the entire video. I don't want this video to be like you know an hour long, but I just want to kind of go over important points. First and foremost. The very first item that you always basically want to back on is the Curse Shield Shard. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it is the 700 gold item that builds into Storm Razor. Um, and hopefully I can demonstrate that in my first back. Now, bear in mind, basically early game, you're not doing anything crazy. Once again, I did mention this is a scaling build, and that is exactly how you're going to see me play it. So let me just skip around. As you can see, I'm literally doing nothing. I have... This is almost perfect CS for the most part. I have the Kershai Shard, whatever this is called. That is the item you want to back first. Generally speaking, I enjoy this back the most. A thousand gold, you're going to get this shard, you're going to get boots, because, once again, you're not really playing to interact with your laner. If you want to interact with your laner, you go Kraken Slayer, you go something else. This was kind of what I was talking about earlier in the practice tool, how you're going into camo and potentially getting off your poke, 
if there's a window. If there's not, cool. I shove, I get CS, I rack up items, and then I just want to be nine late game. Because at the end of the day, this is a late game build. So once again, you're going to see early game, you don't really do anything too fancy. We're getting a new new gank here, and it should work out because she is flashless. End up getting a kill, really good. And by the way, I do want to preface, this is a 1v9 game where my whole team was kind of inting, so you're going to be able to see exactly the strength of this build. Cool. We get a kill, and we potentially are able to roam here because of the boots. I don't think this is a kill, and this is not a kill. That's fine. And we're able to get some. Cool. This should probably be nothing. Oh, I actually remember this. Um, I believe we get nothing. Okay, yep. Yeah. We get nothing. Cool. Once again, you're not doing anything too fancy early game. Early game is basically the same. You're just having a different item. You're have you're playing a little bit differently in terms of just your all-ins. But other than that, this is auction, right? You back, you get noon quiver. Cool. Once again, just hard shoving, getting plates, and roaming. It's literally it. That it's not a hard recipe that you guys can really fail early, right? Unironically. The more consistent you are early, that better. Normally, you consider Auction as like a early game risk taker. You have to get a lead early. Not with this build. With this build, you can actually play extremely slow, and you can actually play just to scale, which is an insane thing to do on Auction, right? But he has the wave clear. He has the roam. He has the capabilities to do exactly that. So, as you're gonna see, currently the score was two six. My whole team's kind of just dying. My top's 0-2, jungle 0-2, AD 0-2. We're able to pick up a pretty good, I think I die here, but we're able to pick up the kill and it's not too shabby. So you'll definitely take that. Now we reach Stormator. So I'm gonna slow down a little bit here. I kind of want to showcase to you guys exactly the poke. There it is. Once again, as I mentioned for practice school, right? When you have 100 energized stacks, I don't know if you can see it, my cam's covering it, but right now I have 100 stacks, right? I go into camo. I just walk up, boom, boom, and then Q. Pretty good damage, right? Kraken, you wouldn't have done this much damage. Um, it is pretty good damage. I dealt an additional 125 damage just like that. And keep in mind, Energize, it's going to keep coming, right? So I can keep on doing that throughout the duration. Um, and two to three more, she can't play lane. She has to recall. You're taking small advantages for you to have a bigger advantage, if that makes sense. Cool. Cool. We got the shove down, and we're able to roam. Let's see if we actually get anything. Should be able to get the Belveth kill. Nice. And once again, nothing fancy. Regular roams, regular gameplay, regular shoving and roaming, right? Now we're going to fast forward a little bit. You guys can kind of understand the gist of getting Storm Razor. You could literally shoving and roaming. I got another kill. Beautiful. Shove, roam, shove, roam, shove, roam. Cool. We're 4, 1, 2. Building into IE, another small tech that you can actually do with this build is you don't have to finish your tier 2 boots. You can go straight for your IE, and then you can build boots. Because once you get Stormraiser IE, that's when your damage is very comparable to, let's say, Kraken and then, like, Bork or something, right? Alright, nothing crazy happening here. Once again, just shoving Roman. We're able to actually pick up another kill, really good and should be able to play for plates. Now, when you are taking plates with this build, make sure you are moving every single time you hit the tower because that stacks the Energize just a little bit faster. Now, I haven't done enough experiments to see if you actually get an extra shot, but I believe you do. So you might as well just make sure you're wiggling uh, while taking tower so you Energize a little bit faster um, because the Energize damage does actually affect uh, towers. Cool, Rowan's mid to shove. Gets CS. Currently, we are 141 CS at 15 minutes, and we've roamed bot like four or five times this game. It's a bit of a mid diff, right? So this is nothing crazy that you guys cannot comprehend or you guys cannot do. This is basic fundamentals of auction, right? Shove roam. Nothing happening here. Now we reach our two item spike, building into tier two boots, and and keep in mind, guys. We're still technically behind. It is 9 versus 17. We are 3k gold behind. My jungler is 0 5. Or he was 0 5. I think he got a kill. Okay. We're able to pick up a res. Really good. And we roam. Oop. Looking for our options here. Nothing happens, but we just clear the wave. 
Okay. Watch this play, guys. A bit of an insane play. I go right by Ezreal. Kill the Syndra. And then I kill everyone. Beautiful. Really, really good. People say, initially, that this build lacks damage. I don't know about that one, bro. I don't know about that one. That looked like pretty good damage to me. Obviously, you are going to be doing less damage. Don't get me wrong. Kraken is going to out-damage Stormraiser in a 1v1 all-out fight. Yes, I'm not delusional. I know math, you know, stuff like that. But the damage is still there, right? So really good. We are now 7 kills. Able to pick up another kill, I believe. Or we got the assist there. And... I'm probably just going to skip all of this part, and we're going to wait until I actually get the core. We're able to get another kill on Syndra. Let's see this fights. Nothing too crazy happening. Swing. Able to kill. Unfortunately missed my E, but still able to kill. And I believe we get one more kill here. Yeah, Ezra should just be dead. I swing. He can't live. Cool. We are now 11 kills out of the 18 kills. We have a total of 16 KP out of 18. Really, really nice. Now is where the build actually starts, right? Obviously, when you have these two items, keep in mind, guys, I got 11 kills just by these two items. But keep in mind, also, when you reach late game, you guys all know this. When you reach late game on regular build auctions and you have like 20 kills, even if you reach late game, you're still getting one shot. You're still forced to go in if you want to do damage. This build doesn't have that problem. You can have a really good early game and a really good late game with this build. Which is really, really good, obviously. So, as you can see, I have the core build. We're just going to fast forward two times where I poke. I believe we get caught here. So, this is nothing. I just run. Cool. Build up tries to engage. We're able to get her. And it's probably nothing. Actually, I think I kill Syndra here. Ooh. I think she lived with 1 HP. The Karthus ult's gonna kill her. And we're able to swing back in. Don't think we get anything. They clean up. Cool. Nothing really to show for there. You didn't really fully see the build, but that's fine. What I really want to showcase to you guys is when there's fights in the mid lane. And keep in mind, guys, once again, this build is scaling. As you get higher and higher levels, this build gets better. Able to pick up two kills. We got Bloodthirster. Let's see how it's played. We're in camo. Alright, here we go. Watch this, guys. That was, with Syndra ulti, that was 14k damage, roughly. Senna's ulti probably did maybe 300. I did 1,000 damage, guys. To the syndrome a thousand damage just by autoing and look get it again okay this is a little bit dicey not able to get much there that's fine though Ooh, this was actually a sick outplay let me show this i had a feeling fiora was there um but we were able to outplay it and this is actually the bloodthirster coming in Ooh, direct cam but yeah, I was just able to outplay her. Let me show it one more time. Hopefully without direct cam. Really, really clean by me. Very important that I eat away from her. And it just allowed me... And that's also the other benefit of this build. You can kite with this build because of Storm Razor. You're getting movement speed. And RFC gives you movement speed. So you are able to actually kite. And be quite effective at it. All right, the score is now 26 versus 26. We are even in kills, but I have 14 of the kills, right? So once again, you see me wiggling here for extra energized damage. And I mean, at this point, like the game's unplayable for them, right? Even at level 16, my W's at a nine second cooldown. Boom, boom. I did about 500 damage to her, not bad. And I believe it was because I didn't crit. That's why I did 500 damage. If you crit, keep in mind, I do have 80% crit here. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep, 80% crit. If I crit there, probably would have done upwards 800 to 1k damage. And all you need is two of those, guys. All you need is two of those, and 
one thing that people actually don't understand about poking is it doesn't even matter if you don't kill them. If you don't kill them and it, they're half HP because you are doing half their HP every single time. By the way, I just got SM3 burst, so you're going to be able to see insane burst. But as I was saying, even if you're not able to kill them, the burst is all you need for them to reset. Cool. You guys want to see from her point of view? I'll show you. Watch. This is Syndra's POV. How do you even react to that? Let me put it in slow-mo. Just so you guys understand how insane poke build is. How do you interact to a poking champion when you can't even see them? Watch this. Instantly, the moment I show, I'm able to auto twice with Essence Reaver. I took a thousand damage, and she's just dead, right? This build is crazy. There's no counterplay. There is really, really just no counterplay, right? So, we're able to pick up another kill. And now, oh, there's another instance. Now, I, I wasn't able to get anything here, but you guys can understand the premise of the build, right? So, we walk up. Boom. That was one auto, guys. You guys saw that? One auto. Let me, let me show it to you one more time. One auto. Legit one auto did 700 damage. It's good. Still it's good. Alright. And that's the Essence Reaver tech, right? The moment that happens, I'm able to weave back into camo and do it all over again. Stack my Energize and do it again. So we're able to get Baron here. And... All right, now the real thing that I want to show you guys, the real power of this build, I am almost level 18. Watch. Watch this, we get level 18 here. Just watch, guys, just watch. Over a thousand damage from Fog of War. Oh, I'm back camo because I'm level 18 and my W's a uh, one second cooldown. Okay, able to pick up a kill. Okay, able to pick up another kill. Watch this, guys. Watch this. This was actually this is what sealed the deal for this gameplay to be able to showcase to you guys. Like, how, how does he play? He can't walk out of the fountain. Let me show it to you one more time. Look at look at this Ezreal, by the way. Let me show it from Ezreal's point of view. Oh, I'm in camo. Uh, I, I think I'm safe. I'm in camo. Let me... Oh! I'm no longer safe. And then just look at how, how much I'm able to jerk this Bel Belveth. Two autos, three autos, she's basically dead. If there wasn't a fountain here, she's dead, right? Go back into camo. Oh! Another two autos, and half her HP is gone. Cool. Oh, she walked in. Another two autos, and she's basically dead. The only reason why she's alive here is Fountain. But I mean, there you guys have it. That is the poke build, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys have any questions about this build, definitely feel free to leave comments. I will answer all of them. And hopefully you guys were able to see the power, the insanity this build can do. Zero counterplay, definitely the best build for Auction if you are able to master it. Anyways, that is it for me. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to slash the like button. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Chen Chen out.